Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome to episode 16. This is a situation where, once again, the Germans have declared war. I might have had a hand in that because I had the occasional issue with them. We were at peace, but hey, accidents happen. Um, now, the ships from the German Navy have been damaged by enemy mines. I'm not sure with how many factions the Germans are at war, but considering that um, I have the area around here, around Helgoland, just behind that window, completely mined, the entire German Navy, as it was trying to set sail, has been damaged. The list goes on and on and on. Again, I'm not sure if these were strictly my mines. They might have been somebody else's. But considering the amount of damage that's been inflicted, and the paths that Germany has, the uh, Palau, Danzig and Kiel all transit, uh, transit through the Kiel Canal, so does Hamburg. So Helgoland and its submarine force is ideally located to start mining the shit out of everybody. Um, we do have a submarine contact here. This is the first time I'm seeing a submarine group attack transports. I can only alter resolve it, but, well, unless this transport has depth charges, I suppose we're going to see these things get... What? <laughs> get killed? No. No, 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 not in this universe. Uh, the transports actually made it out alive, and the submarines were not detected. Great, but that's not exactly what I was hoping for. We also have a couple of submarines here in the North Sea, engaging, well, the entire German Navy. The entire German Navy that's already been damaged. Considering the amount of submarines here, and the fact that they have depth charge 3, makes me a little uncomfortable. They might, in fact, be quite capable of dealing with my submarines. The thing is, some of these German uh, destroyers, like the 113, the 112, they got depth charge type 1. I'm not sure if they have sonar. I'm not sure how capable they are at dealing with my submarines. So let's auto-resolve this and find out. Now, I have complained for a bunch of episodes about the submarines and about the mines. Um, if you can't beat them, join them. So the mining force seems to have done quite a lot of damage already. And sadly, the submarines themselves were very quickly dispatched of by the German Navy. I was apparently completely incapable of detecting and killing or damaging anything. But I did lose a few submarines there myself. Now, considering that these things work fairly well, I think we're going to need a few more. You guys go over there. Set to unrestricted warfare. Sink anything and everything that happens to cross your path. Since I did a bit more submarine research, I can now build a few more designs. I can now build the Super Fleet Submarine. Capable of using six bow tubes, four stern tubes, a four-inch gun, and advanced diesel electric engines. I'm not sure exactly what that means. I suspect it has something to do with the stealth value of these boats. The stealth value here is 1453. If you're looking at cruiser submarines, it's also 1453. The ocean-going submarines have a stealth value of 16.6. So they're potentially slightly better, but their attack power is only eight. Again, I don't know what these numbers are or should be. Whereas the attack power of these things is 17. So let's go and build a whole fleet of super fleet submarines. It's going to apparently cost me 81 million a month, but that bug still hasn't been fixed. So building submarines is essentially free. And, uh, well, you know what? Since these things are essentially free, I'll take another 50. It's going to cost me 270 million a month. But wait, it isn't. So, yeah, if they don't fix the bugs, we might as well use the bugs to make this thing even more uh, hilarious. Now, interestingly, my minings uh, or my mines damaging the German Navy did not come at the price of getting victory points. Sadly not. Only the victory points that I got were from this actual conflict with the German Empire. But I suppose it's going to be a bit more of a one-two punch. Your mines soften up the enemy targets, and then your ships come in and finish them off. So that's the plan. I just need to assemble a fleet. And most of my ships are not available. Most of my ships are in the east, around the waters of Japan. I will send out what I do have, but there's really not that much. 
because I do believe most of this is submarines and uh, some battleships that I still had stationed here. But I think the rest of it, yeah, it's all submarines. Anyway, we're going to send those submarines out here to the North Sea. We're going to make life on the German Empire really, really uncomfortable. The irony here is amazing. All right, uh, nothing here, nothing there, nothing there. One submarine there. Yeah, I think I got no ships to send to these guys. Uh, if I send my battleships out without an escort, it's going to be really quite easy for the Germans to deal damage to them using destroyers. Well, maybe not destroyers, but their submarines. How many German submarines are there? Nine. Okay, it's not that bad. If you look at my fleet, I have 41. But then again, mine are, well, costing nothing, as I don't know about theirs. Then again, if I'm able to shoot out their battleships and battlecruisers, I should be able to get a good amount of victory points there. In the meanwhile, the war against Japan, nothing is happening. The fleets here are still holding position. We're still blockading with a power projection. Or sorry, we're blockading both the Japanese and the Chinese at this stage. Power projection is 113,000 versus 17 and 113,000 versus 1,700. So the Chinese Empire is essentially teethless. Then again, I don't really want to approach to here. There are too many submarines about for me, and there are... Well, there surely are Russian ships around. You know what? Whatever. Why not? You guys are healthy. Let's have a go. Send the fleet. We're going to move these guys here. I really hope we don't get hit by a minefield. If we do, so be it. Because there, at the moment, isn't a whole lot that I can do about that. All right. The rest of the fleet is currently parked here. The island of Honiara has been a little busy. It's got a fairly decent port capacity of 73k, but I've parked 247k there because all of these guys needed repairs. Well, not all of them strictly, but quite a lot of them. And I decided to send the West Virginia there anyway so that I can get that ship fueled up. So let's continue and let's see what the enemy is going to do. After a couple of battles, well, if you want to call it that, between submarines and surface ships, I am very much convinced that submarines are utter trash. This is a group of four submarines. I don't exactly expect them to be able to strike at the battleships or the battle cruisers, because ideally they'd be in the middle of the convoy, or the middle of the fleet, protected by all of these destroyers, every group. But I would expect them to do at least some damage, like anything at all. They do, but beyond damaging a destroyer or two, they really don't do very well. Um, here we got a couple of transports. Let's see if we can catch those. I have also found that, there we go. If you sink a transport, you get one victory point. If you actually do this with a battle, you generally get about 100 or more. And that's generally per transport. So I feel a bit cheated that the submarine, which is, oh, this is fighting nothing. Uh, the submarine, which is ideally suited to dealing with enemy merchant shipping, it does not do anything when it comes to merchant shipping. I mean, yes, it gets the kills, but beyond that, it doesn't really get a lot of victory points for its efforts. To make sure we have some more firepower, I have sent forth both the uh, South Carolina of the Texas class and the Ticonderoga, Ticonderoga, as well as 15 of the Fletcheresques that I built in the previous episode. These things are capable of both hunting mines and submarines, so I expect them to keep both of these battleships safe. They're also armed with a torpedo launcher, 1x3 launchers, so they will be able to offset the enemy fleet a bit, but ideally I just do a whole bunch of damage against the capital ships, get a bunch of victory points and call it even with Germany, because I'm not really that interested in a war with them. In the east, I had sent a task force towards the area west of Japan to pick a fight with some of the Russians. In fact, um, I didn't really get a conflict with the Russians, except for one of those battles where they just sail away. And because of that, this group took some serious damage. Or rather, they already got mined, and that took serious damage. And um, because I was in one of those battles where no shots were exchanged, the enemy ran away, they got victory points. So now they actually have more victory points than I do. In a battle where nothing happened. So 
I don't know. I've done. <laughs> I've sent the bug in. They should be able to fix it at some point. A few months later, Texas is finally able to show her guns in anger. These 20.9 inchers should have no problem dealing with one of those Guo Fans. They're essentially less than half her weight. They have 15.3 inch guns, which can inflict serious damage against some of the other ships. But at a range that these guys can shoot at, the Texas, I don't expect these to be very much of a threat. The only problem might be that the Texas is, I believe, largely untrained. This is the first time she'll be seeing conflict. So because of that, her reload, as well as her accuracy, might suffer a little bit. As I was hoping for a bit of a battle between my fleet and their fleet, I noticed that my fleet, which beyond a couple of those non-battles and beyond chasing down auto-resolve submarines, has not done anything, is completely out of ammo. Every single gun on these ships is dry. Look at Frederick. 7-inch guns, MT 5s 2s. How the fuck do you run out of 2-inch ammunition? Here, for good measure, they're Oregon. Has four shells in six, six and nine. Columbia has shells left. Uh, the Colorado is completely devoid. I have a couple of battle cruisers here which have like 50 shells each. And the Georgia is essentially dead. She just hasn't been sinking yet. This happened because of a mine. Or because of an auto-resolve battle. It makes absolutely no sense. And I am done with this game. This version of the game is so bad, it has so many bugs, it has such trash, that I will not be playing this again. If they're able to fix their bugs, then perhaps, perhaps I'll revisit Dreadnoughts, but they have a long way to go. They have such a long way to go. Again, I would like to like the game. I've had fun with the game in the past couple of years, but this campaign... This version, 1.9.3, or 1.09.3, is just such trash. Don't play this. And I don't like to say that about a game. Don't play this. I'm done. I'm not the only one who's done. I've seen Brother Monroe also rage quit. Um, good luck to Game Labs trying to find somebody who still will cover the game. Because it's definitely not going to be me. At least not until they fix their shit. So sorry to end this campaign before we get a, a nice resolution. I don't like doing it this way at all. But this is not fun for me to play and it's not fun for you to watch. Because I simply cannot make a good story out of this. I cannot fight battles like this. And this is going to be content that's bad for both you and me. So, thank you for watching this series so far. I hope Game Labs can clean up their shit and can clean up their game. So that we can actually start enjoying it again. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon for more.